We have done over 70 episodes with tons of sample code and we have not unit tested a single thing. Let's mash on that. Hi everybody and welcome to another episode of the ASP.NET Monsters. Uh, in today's episode we embarrassingly admit that we don't know how to test anything. Uh, but <laughs> Dave's going to set us straight, don't worry. All right. I have a, a sample app here called the Alpine Ski House website, and it has various services and controllers and, and different things in it, and we want to create a unit test project to test those. So what I did here is I, I created a new uh, alpineskihouse.web.test. So here in our project JSON, where we pull in our dependencies, uh, we obviously have a dependency on the project that we're testing, that's alpineskihouse.web. And decided to use XUnit here mostly because well it's a great unit test framework but it's also the unit test framework that the ASP.NET team uses for everything that they've written so the so trivia I discovered about XUnit yeah. is if you are running XUnit inside of Team City and you use the XUnit console runner it will detect that it is running inside of Team City and produce appropriate output that Team City will understand oh nice so Isn't you don't have awesome? to you don't have to configure yeah, it to do that that's fantastic. Yeah. Good stuff. So we bring in X unit, and then this is the important piece here that we bring in the .NET test X unit. So that's the uh, .NET test command line tooling specifically for X unit. So it lets us run the all of our unit tests from the command line using .NET test. Also using mock, which is a, a mocking library. Probably won't get into that too much today, and then also Entity Framework Core for in-memory testing. Gonna get into that in a future episode. Then we have to specify what our test runner is. So again, we're using XUnit as our test runner. And let's just take a look at one very simple test here, just to give you an idea of what XUnit looks like. So we're testing something called our CSR Information Service, which is the customer so this is why we shouldn't use uh, acronyms, yeah, Customer right? service representative, maybe? Something like that. Yeah. So there's this service called the CSR service that doesn't do a whole lot. It takes in some options here, and it tells us if there's more than, if there's there are any representatives online, that's just an integer in the options that were passed in, then that call center is considered online. So some pretty basic logic there. And what I've done is I've written tests for two scenarios here. I'm saying given there are no representatives online, so in that case I create some options here to pass in. I set my online representatives to zero, so that's my setup happening here. And then this is my test method, so we have a fact. So a test method is called a fact in XUnit. So it's something that should, should be true. Uh, that the call center should be false is what I've named the test. So here I create my service, passing in the options that I created in the constructor. I'm saying assert false call center online. So call center should be false, online should be false if there are no representatives. The second one is that given that there is at least one representative online, and here I'm doing something a little bit different. Instead of a fact, I'm calling this one a theory. So a theory is something that should hold true given a number of inputs. So we're saying that the call center should be, call center online should be true uh, given some set of options, uh, set, set of inputs, which we specify using member data. So I'm saying uh, get all of the different options that we want to pass into here from this property named options, which if I just do an F12 on that takes me right to the definition here. And it's just a list of objects. So the syntax is a bit funny here to just initialize that. But essentially I'm specifying a bunch of different options to pass in where we have one, two, three, a thousand, a hundred thousand, just to test some different limits with the, the service. And then it, the test itself uh, is fairly straightforward. We're simply saying you know, create that service and then assert that call center online is true. And then the second test in this scenario was again a theory passing in the same options saying uh, the number of online representatives should match the source. So saying assert equal uh, my 
online representatives from the options that were passed in should match what the service says. Okay, so those are the tests and we'll start by running those from the command line here. So in my test project folder here, this is the one where the project JSON is, uh, what I can do is I'll just build the app first, dot and build, build the assembly rather. Okay, so I compiled successfully. Now I can run my tests by calling .NET test. Which will run it through the X unit test runner, find all the tests, execute them, and hopefully they'll all pass. So here we see there are other tests in this project as well, but we have 20 total, no errors, everything passed. So that's great. Go ahead. Uh, that's the command line version. That's what you would use um, if you maybe were running this developing from Linux or Mac OS X um, or from your, if you're integrating with your build server. Mm -hmm. So another X unit tip is that X unit will run your tests in parallel. Mm. So that is true. That can if cause you problems have, sometimes. Yes. If you've been bad and made it so your tests have some sort of dependency one upon the other, or if they share resources, uh, that might come back to bite you. So that's something to be aware of. Very true. Hopefully that's not the case. Um, but next up here, we'll run it in Visual Studio. So from the Test Explorer, it's under Test, Test Windows and Test Explorer. I'll just pin that to the left-hand side here. And this sometimes is a little goofy in that it doesn't update right away with all your tests. Uh, if that's the case, what you usually have to do is kind of pin that to make sure it stays open and then build your assembly again, which will cause it to go through and find all of your tests. So while I let it, let it do that, notice everything's green already because I had this uh, very well hidden feature here with the test explorer. This button on the top left says run tests after build. Mm -hmm. That's a toggle button. So if you have that turned on, my tests will automatically run after every time I build the project. So it's just kind of always running in the background every time to see if you're, and there it goes, my build completed. Now it's triggered a build and it's gonna run through. And my tests for the um, CSR service are here. You can see that they all passed. Gives us some timing and other stats at the bottom. If they fail, this is where you would see the, the details that it failed. And here for the, this one is my my theory that, look at this one. Given there is at least one rep representative line, call center should be, call center online should be true. You can see that it, it only shows up as a single entry here up top, but when I click on it, I see uh, the entries for each of the the options that I had passed in through to the theory. Another sort of well hidden feature here in Visual Studio is that uh, what's the name of this feature again, Simon? The one that shows this info. Oh, now you're gonna make me code think lens. about it. Now. Code yes, lens. thanks. Yeah. Uh, so Code Lens also understands your tests, so it knows that this is a test here. And if I click on that little green check mark, I can also get the information, the same thing that I would see in Test Runner in the Test Explorer. It also gives me the option directly here to debug. So this is pretty handy if a, if a test failing, obviously it's a, it's gonna show up as a red X here instead of a green check mark. But if I wanted to rerun it, I can click run or I can click debug and very quickly debug just that one test. Actually a really handy feature when you have failing tests. Then you can step through. To... And now you can step over, step into uh, just like you normally would when you're debugging. Great. So that's a, br a brief overview of uh, unit testing ASP.NET Core projects with XUnit. And we'll do some follow-up episodes where we get into things like uh, mocking specifically and um, Wow, I'm blanking. Yeah, anything else we can think of to talk about test-wise? 
Yeah, I, I wanted to do an episode on Entity Framework and right. testing dependencies on Entity Framework, so using something called the in-memory database. Great. Okay, well, thanks a lot, Dave. I think that was uh, enlightening, especially that we've managed to get through like 70 episodes without talking about it previously. <laughs> Somewhere Uncle Bob is sharpening a knife for me. Yep. Uh, but that's great. So thanks, everybody, for listening. And uh, remember to like, comment, and share. And if you have any questions, there's a, a place down there you can put them or you can send us an email. Uh, and we'll see everybody on the next episode of the ASP Net Monsters.